Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. I really super appreciate it. Um, I, uh, we had a, it was a little bit of a stressful week here, so I'm really happy to have a little bit of normalcy for, for me and to be able to bring that to you, too. So, um, yeah, so we, um, I was without power for, uh, I don't know, off and on for four, about four days and no internet. Um, part of our team still has no power or internet, so we're kind of in still in a little bit of recovery mode there. So I'm hoping that all of you are, if you're watching, obviously you have some kind of power and internet, but definitely uh, thoughts and prayers go out to people around the country that are experiencing some um, similar or worse. Um, uh, yeah, it was pretty challenging. So... Um, yeah, but that being said, the whole the whole week was kind of humbling and made me also awful grateful uh, and and feeling really fortunate and to kind of recognize that these these small um, hardships are kind of um, reminders that it's not supposed to be all fun and games all the time. Uh, it's not. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, it was a very uh, interesting week here, but I'm super glad to be here. Um, also glad to be painting some flowers for you. I think it's time to invoke some spring and some brightness and some growth and renewal. So um, we can um, revel in that a little bit today. And um, I have a couple of things to share with you today. Um, I am in the Pastel Journal Top 100, so um, that's really, really fun. And I'm just uh, going to share it with you a little. Can you guys go to this? Yeah. So I'm in this. Uh, let's see. Wh where am I? Uh, I, I had a couple pages. So I'm, th this is my piece, Picnic Stop. This is my favorite one of the two that got in. Um, I like the mark making. And I actually showed both of these two. You guys, if you were um, watching some months back, there was a period that I took a few days off from filming and I just dug into my pa pastel practice and I ended up entering a couple of those pieces and two of them got in and then this one. Um, it's interesting how the, the, the judges choose pieces because this is not my favorite of the pieces that I entered. Um, and actually, neither is this one, but I'm happy that they're in there. I also, I just so appreciate the amazing work that's in the the issue. It's really stunning, stunning work. So if you uh, subs subscribe to Pastel Journal, make sure you're going to spend some time with it. So on this um, facing page from me is my... Um, friend and former student who's just um, a wonderful painter, Allie Goss from um, Washington. So her piece is right here. And so that's so great to see um, in, in Pastel Journal. Uh, I love her. Um, congrats to Allie. That's really, really cool. Um, I think she, she's been in it before. So she's, you know, she's a painter of some some renown. And then um, I just love, I love Nancy King Mertz piece, um, Jeannie Rosier Smith. It's fun to see this after I had um, spent some time doing some wave stuff. Um, I know Phil Bates. It's really, really fun to see some people's work in here. What else did I want to share? Oh, I just wanted to share a couple of things that I think are really spectacular. So this is, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name, Yale Maman. She does all the cats. She does other stuff too. She's an amazing painter. I love, love, love this piece. I love so much of her work. Um, they're just really inspiring. The mark making, the directness, the, the movement, the expression that she gets. It's really spectacular stuff she does. Um, so always really, really fun to see if, that she won a big award, um, the Richardson Pastel Gold Award for her work. So it's re really neat to see. And there she is with her cat. Um, one, one of her cats, and then this portrait work is just stunning, so subtle, so um, evocative, love it. Um, and then 
I have to share. I love this piece too. So this one, um, I'm not going to be able to pronounce his name either. Yavad, this very difficult name. Um, but I love this painting in here. It's just, it's inside the Hagia Sophia. Uh, it's just gorgeous. That is a stunning, stunning piece. And this piece, it makes me want to travel a little bit. It, I'm not super, super anxious to get back on the road to teach workshops or to really go anywhere. But when I see this, I think, oh, yeah, wow, it's so beautiful. Uh, and then this piece that he's done here, I love how he's treated the sky. Look how he's used the texture of the paper to um, further his idea and what he's painting. So this is a really good example of using the materials to great effect and making good choices about materials to, um, to push along your idea. So I'm, I was not familiar with his work until now, and I'm so happy. Look at, he's very versatile. Love this piece too, this portrait of um, Jane Goodall, gorgeous. So yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he won the Founders Award, and that is amazing. So okay, so enough of that for now. Um, now the next thing I wanted to, to do today was to um, take a look at, the website a little bit or remind you about the website because one thing that I realized, we realized we um, uh, haven't really shown you what's up on the website. We okay? You're good, you're good. We're good. Okay. I'm a little allergic. Okay. Um, so I wanted to um, put up a couple graphics here. So if you go to the website Painting Lessons with Marla, you're going to see the first splash screen there with me. <laughs> and then up at the top of the nav bar, there's a, um, a little drop down. Um, it says, um, what's it say? Does it say guess, get lessons? I should know. <laughs> I don't. Get lessons in that drop down. If you click on the workshops, you'll be able to see all the workshops in oil, um, watercolor, acrylic, and pastel. It's all there. Just scroll down, keep scrolling down. And there are, I think, 12 um, online workshops. So. That's how you get to that. So just to kind of show you the nav on the website. And it's the website's pretty, and it's just fine, kind of fun to look around. So um, check it out and poke around on there and um, see if there's anything there that you like. Hey, um, Marla, um, can you really quickly say the, um, the number and the date of that pastel journal? Yeah, it's, a, it's the newest one. It's um, spring 2021 is what it says on here. So I'm... I'm not sure whether they're doing fewer issues now. They, you know, they were bought by Golden Peak Media, so I'm not sure if I don't think it's as frequent as it used to be. It's uh, so, four times a year. Four times a year. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah. they probably have an option. Just go to their website if you wanted the uh, back issue or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You can. I think that you can just. You can also buy. You can also get digital issues. I know that because Allie, Allie saw my pieces and she texted me and said, hey, you know, so um, I know she gets the digital version. So you can get that. Oh, also on my website, you can purchase a critique um, if you like, um, and along with the workshops. And of course, there's the monthly pastel painting lessons online, the subscription, and which is going to be coming out. We're going to be coming out with the year three pretty soon, sooner, sooner than later. So that's fun. Um, all right, so the so today what I thought I would do, I would spend just a couple minutes, two or three minutes, talking about a piece that I did for um, the monthly um, subscribers um, on what, what we're, we call our super stream. It's kind of an extended lesson version of this, um, uh, what we do here. And I painted this uh, night scene. And Bryce, get the, the reference? Okay, cool. Great. So, um, so this piece, I, I, you know, in painting in a lesson, I'm trying to stay out of the way. I'm, I, I've, I'd never painted this before. Uh, so it, it's kind of challenging for me. And I was so uh, pleased to see that several of you guys, several of my students, uh, painted a version of this and did so well. 
and gave me actually some ideas. I haven't done anything on it, but there's a couple things that I do want to kind of clean up on it. I think it was Sherry that did a really nice version of it, and she had these windows a little bit darker. So, see, I think the this orange in, on mine pops out a little bit, and that is making it so this doesn't get to pop out as much. So I think if I darken some of this and settle some of these down just a little bit, I think that will help a lot because I noticed that about hers. I also need to work on my tree shapes. I didn't go back in there. It was my intent to kind of play with these and get these a little bit more um, clarified, I would say. The other thing that I noticed about Sherry's piece was she did a really great job here. She took some time and got this little vehicle really nice. And I think that that was good. Um, I also would like to get my little figure in here just a little bit better and maybe this one here. It's, you know, there's some kind of suggestion of, of people moving and action here, but I didn't um, take the time to really clarify that. Other than that, I kind of like it. I, I actually, oops, I like it. I liked it more than I thought I would. The moment that I stood back, I, I went outside my studio and I came back in and I'm like, oh yeah, that's pretty neat. Um, so I think it's always really a good idea to step back and get that sort of uh, sideways glance at a piece, just kind of just that quick glance gives you a different perspective. Um, I, I like what's happening here. I like the mark making. So um, it's it's certainly, I think this, where I'm at that this stage, it's worthy of, you know, a little bit more time with without being in the, on the camera, maybe <laughs> it'll help. And uh, just clarifying a few things and settling a few things down and just kind of bringing it to that real, you know, um, I'm going to use the word polish. Um, that doesn't mean it has to be slick. And the polish meaning I've just paid attention to all the little bits. Okay, so that's that. That's um, that one. I think that's kind of interesting. Now, today's piece, I want to talk about some choices that I've made. Um, ab about painting this this um, piece today. So I I chose the piece of reference. It, it happens to be it happens to be my yard. Uh, so that's nice. Yeah, um, because my yard <laughs> didn't look like this the other day. Um, uh, yeah, so, and I'm hoping it will look like that again <laughs> sometime pretty soon. Um, I, the other reason I chose this reference is I've, um, last year I did a little watercolor study from this reference. So here's my watercolor study, and I really like it. I like that, um, that it's the fl these flowers are big. There's a little artistic license taken in, in here, a little much. I like the pots, geraniums, and I like that this red of the petunias is echoed back in this, these other wispy plants back here. I like in the back how the background, how the watercolor worked for this background. It's kind of um, more diffuse and lighter in value. I think uh, just with a, just a hint of dark kind of silhouetting some of these shapes. And I think I want to stay with something like that. So given that, that how I'm thinking about it, now the next thing is that I then have to make some choices about a couple of things. Materials. What choices of paper and materials and, you know, underpainting technique and what ha all the, of all the myriad of choices that available to me as a painter, not just a pastelist as a painter, go into you know, how I'm going to do it. <laughs> and so I think that um, so when, when I'm kind of strategizing, and that, that's what I think, I'm, it's not so much trying to come up with the formula 
It's just coming up with a strategy, like how do I get in there without it, in the best way that I can think of. Um, so one of the things that I do is, is there anything else that I've already painted or painted recently that does some of that? And yes, there actually happens to be. And so um, for the monthly uh, lessons recently, I painted this. <laughs> I, I just actually really, really love this painting. Bryce, can you show the hand? Thanks. I don't know, you guys. I just love it. Um, I know it's kind of, it's, it's, it's sweet. But um, so what it has in common, so the, I love how these flowers worked out back here. It just turned out nice. Um, it, it, it has a sort of airiness and um, the, the feel of, I, of these flowers is going to kind of, that's kind of what I want. So this is what I want up here in a pastel version. Now, okay, so, so I'm going to, you know, step back from, from this and go, okay, how did I get here? What, what choices did I make on this? That, that, that worked. Okay, a couple things. The first thing that I did was that I looked at the work of Richard Schmid. And Richard Schmid, uh, I, you know, this, this book is amazing, A La Prima. There's A La Prima 1 and 2. Get them both <laughs> if you can. Um, they're great books. He's a wonderful writer, very humorous, very down to earth about painting. There's none of this like, you know, kind of highfalutin stuff about art history or anything. It just, just down to earth, how to paint, how to think about it or ways to think about it. Just really, really nice. Now let's look at what he did here with the flowers. He's given us a little step by step. There's not a lot of that in this book that with here. So he's got a really loose washy background that he's put the flowers on top of. It looks like maybe he left some spaces for them. Maybe he wiped out, this looks like maybe he wiped out the, the wash for some of these flowers. Like So he's drawing already, he's wiping out. And then he's darkened you know, to give the silhouettes, sort of like how I would want to do here. And then he's come back in with the detail and stronger strokes. And then he's put, you know, obviously put this on top of a thin wash, oil wash. So that's pretty good information. And we can do the same thing in pastel. Okay, so then I, um, again, I, I absolutely love his work. Now look at this, this sort of vignetted thing diffuse background. Some of this is kind of what would be nice up in here. That's pretty neat. Pretty good to look at. Like, all right, can we do some of that in pastel? Yeah. Then I just think he's amazing. I like these little details that he's got. Look at how the, the overall effect here of this painting with all the tangled branches. You guys know I love this stuff. The atmosphere. Look how he did it. It's just, it's just little, it's just marks. Um, so it's beautifully done. Now he's real, to me, a painter's painter. Beautiful portraits. Um, and, oh, and this book has all these charts. It's amazing. It's an amazing book. Amazing, amazing. He's a landscape painter. He's a portrait painter. He does florals. He does you know, these cityscape, everything. So he's a real painter's painter. So more flowers to look at. Okay, so I'm going to put this on uh, this tangle of flowers. So this is the kind of thing that I looked at when I was doing my hen. So next, next thought here. So I'm going to put this book with this page right here, right there. So I can see it. I can look at it while I'm painting. I'm going to put my hen same thing, right there on the floor. I'm going to put them on the floor because normally I would put them up, but because um, you guys are here, I'm not going to do that today. Next thing, I have to 
choose some paper. And um, I don't think I want white. I kind of, I was mulling around in my head, do I want white? And I decided, no, I don't want white. I want that soft background, but I don't want white. I don't want to fight the white today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one. And this color is from this pad of pastel matte. You guys, you know, we can just show it. It's this pad. And this pad has white, sienna, brown, <laughs> and anthracite. This is the brown. To me, it looks kind of, doesn't look so brown. It looks almost like a purpley gray, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with them. So that's from this pad. So my plan is to do the same kind of technique I used for the hen, which was what I did for the hen, was I put a light, thin wash, uh, kind of broad swiping strokes of pastel down for the background. And then I moved that around with um, isopropyl alcohol. And so that's what I'm gonna do this time for this one. And so that's how I'm gonna find my way in. Now, a couple of things with that. I'm looking at these flowers. And I'm thinking, well, I want, I don't want the wash over these because I don't want a, I don't want to have to put my brightest, you know, color pops over the top of another layer. So I am going to sketch in these big flowers, the main ones. So I'm, and I'm not going to put a wash there. It might get a little bit on there, but it's okay. So I'm gonna plan for some of this. I'm gonna do a little bit of a sketch and then that wash. And then I'm gonna hope <laughs> that I can get some of the, what I did in, with the hen and maybe, you know, uh, channel Richard Schmid just a little bit and we'll see what happens. So that's my plan for today. And so I just wanna kinda clue you into some of the, my thought process of how I'm making these choices about how, you know, how to get to where I wanna go. Now, it might not work, but I know that I've got a number of, uh, number of tools in my kit, tools meaning tools of what the materials are, tools are what um, kind of underpainting, kind of technique tools to use. So I'm gonna choose the one that I think, or the combination of them that I think will um, get me to my, you know, supposed goal the easiest. Okay? All right. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Cool, Marla. Um, just on the chat here, mm -hmm. um, just to clarify, what percentage alcohol do you usually use? Yeah, I'm, I use the 70%. And, and you always use that. I always use the 70%. The 90 is stronger. And so the 70 is just a little easier on the, your, your painting surface. Also, a lot of people complimented you on the watercolors. They really like them. Oh, yeah, they're fun. So I have a watercolor workshop. <laughs> Two of them. Yeah, so yeah, so, yeah this, is, this is from that. We did all kinds of fun stuff in that. This is the watercolor um, from the watercolor workshop. And it was great. Really, really great. Really great. Um, that was... That feels like a really long time ago. It's about a year ago. Man, oh man, oh man. So, yeah. Cool. It's still there, though. You can do it. It's really fun, and it's, you know, the watercolor workshop's super liberating in that, um, you know, it's just just kind of fun painting stuff, anything, or stuff around your house, um, and really gets you into that sketching mode. I. I, I did the watercolor workshop because my, if there's anything that I really uh, treasure in my house, in my studio, it's, it's my sketchbooks. Those come first. Those would be the first thing I'd grab if I had to. Um, <laughs> um, so I thought, oh, I really want, I want, I want to go to my deathbed with stacks and stacks of them, and I want to be carrying them. I want people to carry them out with me. Um, so I definitely want that in my painting and art practice. So um, also, just jumping on the watercolor stuff, mm -hmm. um, 
Would you say that workshop is for beginners? Yeah, it's totally for beginners. It's for and everybody. It's just it's really like just jump in and draw what you see and draw stuff around your house and not not about being perfect and not it's not like um it's watercolor sketching. It's not oh you have to be you have to be a purist watercolorist cuz I'm not. I'm not a purist pastelist either. So no, it's just like get in there and um, get those creative juices going, draw what you see, paint what you see, not, not a ton of materials. Though with watercolor, you can go crazy. You can go not so crazy with um, the materials, but um, you don't have to. Um, so watercolor is great. And I, as you can see, I'm very, I very much love... Um, the monthly people saw last week I did a little watercolor study before, yeah, before I um, did the that night scene. And I think um, watercolor is so great for, um, oh, I'm looking for my hair tie. I got to get in. <laughs> I'm, I might have to have you go get one, Kevin. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't have it. Sorry. Sorry to make you run in do such a personal thing. Um, yeah, you don't have to make the watercolor that big a deal at all. It can be really, really simple. And that's, I know I like that about it. Okay, I'm running, I'm talking a lot today. I'm going to get up here and wait till Kevin gets back to get started. Um, okay, I got to have my hair up, otherwise you guys won't be able to see a thing. So... All right. I hope everybody is well. I hope you made it through the, everyone's making it through the weather okay. Um, it's, it was pretty, I went for my walk before this morning, and thank you, Kevin. That was nice of you. Um, and it's pretty crazy around here, the, the, the trees down. Everybody's got trees down. Big ones. And... On, on houses, on cars, on, yeah. So let's, let's think good thoughts for the PGE guys <laughs> and, the, and the, the people that need, still need power and warmth and maybe invoke a little spring here while we're painting. I don't know what size it is. It's the, it's the, yeah, it's, it's 11 by 15 and a half, but I'm not using it for the whole image. So my image area is, um, right now it's 12 and a half by, um, 10 and a half. I'm, I might take up a little bit more of it and, you know, we'll see. All right. So I'm going to look both at my little, uh, my watercolor sketch, and I'm just going to sketch in um, a f these little elements. I like my little, this is my little outbuilding that's over there. Um, and this is my euphorbia. Eub euphorbia. I love these beautiful chartreuse colors. And this is the sort of tree shape back behind here that, that I want really diffuse. And here's the, these kind of sprays of, of color in here. Just you know, really loose. I just need to kind of get some idea of where things are going to reside. It doesn't have to be. And this one is neat. It's in my sketch. And then I've got these pots. I guess I want some idea of these pots so I can play with this ellipse a little bit, but I don't need to go nuts because it's really covered by the plants. There's a little dark in here. That's good. And my, my paper's got some scoring on it today. This pastel matte, some of it's like that. Um, that's too bad. But I'm going to roll right through it. There's a little bit of 
There's just where the geraniums are sitting. Here's this little other, here's my other pot down here at the bottom, a little dark. I can, I don't need a whole lot of line. It's just a little, little playful line. Then my petunias, um, and I just get the kind of idea of their placement in the center, and this one's kind of, I like my watercolor sketch a lot, so I'll kind of try to stay with what was happening there. And this one is kind of in here. So now I know that these two spots, these spots are spots that I really don't want to put that wash down too heavily. And, and maybe my U, Uba is coming up here. All right, that's, that's a, kind of all I want. Maybe some idea that it's, there's some darker shapes in here. In the watercolor, they're pretty colorful and fun. Got a All question right. from mm -hmm. uh, Carol. Yeah. I noticed often that Marla grabs for local color. When is it best to do so? Oh, so, yeah. So most of the time when I'm kind of having a representational, like, you know, idea, the local color is just easy <laughs> to start with. So, um especially if it's something I've not painted before or it's the first time, I'm gonna kind of start more representational and then, you know, you know, kind of shift away from it as I, as I go along. So it just, it's, it's, it's just kind of easier to paint what you see. All right, so this is a thin application, just super thin. some brighter color and um, I'm going to go in here with this kind of green in here. Now one thing about using that alcohol wash, it's going to darken everything right off the bat. So I know that it's okay to be a little bit lighter in value. It, it's um, I'm going to have to come in with some lighter stuff. See, look at that scoring. I'm getting kind of a lot. Um, all right, that background. Um, just with the knowledge that it's going to get darker, I'm going to put this in. And I just, I like that watercolor. I like that the kind of cooler background. Um, so I'm just going to play with that a little bit. Also, Marla, um, would you like to clarify what local color means? Local color is the truck is red. It's a red truck. My grass is green. It's just what what the what it is um, kind of un what you would see something without the influence of any kind of colored light or. And well, it depends on how you're approaching it. Um, you could you could you could say that it's exactly what you see out out there. Then it would be influenced by whatever um, light is present. But local color is just really referring to, you know, how I think about. Okay, the, this this pot is blue. The local color of it is blue. It's kind of this this kind of um, blue to me to my eye. The this one is kind of this. So if you had an egg on a table that was reflecting a bunch of yellow light, yeah, the local then color of the egg is yellow. white. It's yellow. It's yellow. Yeah. Okay. Because it's that's be, that's why it's tough when you're a painter because you have to get over that color constancy. 
Um, and color constancy is the thing that's responsible for making our brain think that something, a color is a something under um, different light. We'll, we'll make believe that that banana is uh, yellow under different colored lights or the egg. We'll, we'll, in our, our, our head, we'll think, oh, it's white, but it's not really white. So my first statement about unvarnished by the um, uh, um, presence of light was not exactly correct. So now I'm just coming in and this I wish I would have not put color there. This is good, this is better. So nice and loose, just playful. Look kind of looking at the um, the watercolor. Kind of not. I like it already. <laughs> I think it's really kind of sweet. And, and kind of so refreshing. So right now it's so abstract. It could be moved into that. See, right, right now is an opportunity to like, what direction do you want to take it? Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it in to a little more standard kind of finish look. All right, I got these, those in for that. I'm going to make my little rooftop a little bit oranger than it really is. Oh, it's already kind of springy. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, I'm going to make that building back there um, the color that it used to be, which was a kind of icky, icky baby pink. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not that color anymore. But I but that color will work well in the painting, so I think leave it there. And now we'll get something in there for the sky. Here's a question. Um, the use of hard versus soft pastel for underpainting. Uh, is there any need to worry about that? No, not really. I mean, it, no. I don't think so. You can use either. Really, when it comes to the hard and soft, to me, um, because so the 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 really soft ones tend to obviously put down more product. And right now, as long as I'm just kind of whispering the pastel, I'm not pressing hard. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing this. I'm not getting lots of layers. It's not thick. It's really thin, and so I'm in good shape. It's fine. So when I get to the alcohol, it's going to be okay. We're going to need to um, dry it, Kevin, for a second. Oh, we don't. Yeah, you can you take I'll it inside? Your, yeah, because yeah, we don't want to trip the brake. We don't want to have any power issues. Oh my God, that would be <laughs> that would be not good today. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, we know what. Okay. That's crazy. It was nuts, you guys. The there's the 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 um hair dryers right there on the hutch. Oh great. I'll go plug it in right now. Mm -hmm. So uh this is fun. I I love this. It's really um, basically I'm basically I'm just going to move all of this around and let it do its thing, kind of. I'm even going to come on over the top of this because I want this guy back here to be kind of diffuse. See how it's going to make it all pretty dark. Look at that color is about what's in the watercolor now, which is really neat. 
and come around this shape a little bit. So I'm drawing a little bit with the um, with the brush, but not much. I'm mostly just getting this all moved around, mushed around. And how 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 far do you think you need to take the underpainting? Very high level of, or you know detail. It really, you know, it really depends on what you're after with the underpainting. Like I'm kind of after, I want this, I know that underpainting is gonna help me get that diffuse background. Like look at that. That's already doing kind of what I had in mind for the background. So um, that's good. Uh, sometimes, you know, I know you can use the underpainting as like really a, a super, um, structured foundation for uh, um, for the, the final piece. Um, and there, I don't do that very often, but there are a lot of pastelists that do. Um, and there isn't a right or wrong answer to it. To me, the underpainting gives me the opportunity to have, to get some kind of uh, diffuse edges, unexpected kind of, some spontaneity that gives me some other ideas. Um, you know, I'm looking at this and I, I already think that it's really, um, it's really pretty. It's already better than, what, look at, and this is, look at when you go over this color, it's so lively. Like all this, ah, oh, it's so great. There is nothing bad about that. I like it. <laughs> I really like it. Okay. All right, time for Kevin. All right. To take it away. Take it away, Kevin. All right. Now what do I talk about for two minutes? Okay. Yeah, do we have any we questions? Have. Yeah. Thanks. I, I can find some. I usually can find something to say. <laughs> How does the alcohol affect the paper? Um, yeah. Uh, it doesn't, so that's one of the reasons I use the 70% rather than the 90 because I'm trying to be a little careful about this, the paper, paper surface. The pastel mat takes the alcohol wash really well uh, and it will, it'll bear the brunt of even 90% but I just want to be a little cautious so that it's not going to eat into the surface or make any of the um, bits uh, disadhere. So the pastel mat's made of like a cell cellulose fibers. And it, so it, I guess technically speaking, it's not a sanded surface. It's not, it's not sandpaper. Um, uh, like Wallace paper, Lux archival, UART, those are more, you know, traditional sanded surfaces. They will take the alcohol wash and it won't necessarily eat or make anything bad happen to the paper. So, um, so if you use, um, uh, you like there's the paper, I can't, why can't I think of the name of the paper that you can't even spit on? It will get, you'll ruin the surface. Obviously those kinds of papers, um, you you can't use the alcohol wash on. So I'm um, usually the manufacturers, when you buy the paper, it kind of says, most papers that are saying that they're multimedia papers have some kind of backing or a surface that you can use multimedia on. So they're usually okay. All right. Another question. Okay. Do you prefer wet or dry underpaintings? Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. So obviously that one was wet because I wet the, the, the pastel with the alcohol. Now I used, you could just as well have used water and it would have much the same effect, maybe slightly differently, so look, appear slightly differently. Um, but the reason I used the alcohol was it dries faster. Uh, dry underpaintings, you could use uh, you could use just the pastel and smoosh it around with, say, a, a tissue. You could use a cosmetic sponge. You could use paper towel and uh, any of those. So most of the time I'm going to wet it because I like that. I like the way it looks. 
It was fun. It's fun. You know, you put that on there and it's like, it looks fun. Are acrylics too heavy for an underpainting? Some acrylics are too heavy for an underpainting. So you could use like a fluid acrylic or um, um, if you really, really thin, so I have fluid acrylic here. There's a couple different ones and the different brands. There's high flow. This is fluid. These are both golden. This is, this is called, this one's fluid. It's really kind of confusing because this one's called high flow acrylics. And this one's called fluid, just fluid acrylics. So, um, you know, they're, they're kind, they're very similar. This one's pretty, pretty um, thin. This one is a little thicker. And so um, you just have to be aware. Now, if you use the regular tube acrylics, I'm going to say the word basic acrylics, but I don't want to use that word because it's not actually, there's one of the brands uses basics to, to speak of um, something different. But just the regular um, um, regular bodied acrylics on, in that you traditionally see in the tube, you have to thin those down, way, way down. Otherwise, it will create a, like a, um, you know, it's plastic, like a plastic layer, barrier, that the pastel won't adhere to. It'll just kind of slip around on it. It's not, not very good. All right, let's get at this a little bit. Oh, I really like this. It's really pretty. I hope the painting will be pretty. <laughs> All right. All right. So I think the first thing to do is to get some of these darks to orient myself and to get some shapes in that feel like they might be these leaves. So negative painting, it's such a great opportunity for it. Cut in around. And um, we do thank everyone who um, donates to the Super Chat. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. But we'll say it again. What we really want you to do is go check out the website. And just a, a few people throughout the chat commented um, on different quality pastels. Yeah. And um, so you just add, like, it's always good to have good quality material of what you can afford and, and so on. Oh, yeah. But would you recommend um, investing in some, you know, high quality Terry Ludwigs and that kind of thing? Well, yeah, if you can. You know, there there's a big difference in... Um, what you can do, I think, though, you know, there, I see some amazing stuff done with, with just, um, you know, student grade work. So it, you, you know, art making is always tricky that way because you, you, you know, using better materials is, is helpful. There are things that you, you know, are, are colors and things that you can do with them. But to me, it's better to, Make art than not make art. So, you know, use what you have and what you can afford. Um, I am a big um, fan of particular kinds of brands, but, you know, I've amassed these pastos over years and years. So um, uh, it's, it's expensive. So, um, yeah, if you can get some better stuff to try and see what what it's like by comparison I think that's you know it's good oh this is a fun one you guys I hope you're I hope those of you that are painting along or enjoy it too get up in here and get a little bit of this 
Now let's get over here. I'm going to go ahead and get some of some color in the center. This is kind of the center of these flowers. There's some other flowers in here. Kind of tucked in. There's some opportunity for some brighter stuff over here that's behind. And then the geraniums. Oh, here's, I a, want... here's another tricky question, actually. Okay. Um, this is a genuinely tricky one because right. it's also subjective. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> what one person doesn't like, another person loves. So, yeah, I know. Um, it's true. What pastel should I avoid? Oh, that is a tricky question. Um, well, you, you know, the things that you want to avoid are the ones that have a lot of talc in them. Um, and the, there's a, you know, the, kind of some real student grade, like the prang. Like, prang is probably one to avoid because it's, you know, it really... You want to try to get the best ones that you can for the money, and they the um, you want ones that are pure pigment and not um, d don't have any additives like talc um, in them. So that's that's kind of that. So yeah. starting to get a little picky. I don't want to get picky. I don't want it to be picky at all. So I'm really getting this paper, this particular piece of paper has um, a great deal of scoring. But it's okay in this case. It doesn't, it's not really making too much difference. There's a question. Um, I was wondering how to approach a painting when using a reference photo with particularly flat lighting. Um, in what regard to do what in order to, you want to um, create a sense of form when because you, you don't see it in the photo? Is that what's, what's wanted? So that's trying, to me it sounds like trying to paint something from some reference with, with, with a lack of information possibly. Kind of like when you, you know, you paint with those blurry photos sometimes. It's a reference photo, you can fill in a lot, I suppose. So now I'm going to come back here. There's some really fun negative shapes back in here that I want to try to play with. So this person clarified the question. They're okay. on a flat reference photo. They're trying to make it more interesting and add depth. Okay. So you're, yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm just going to have a devil's advocate. Um, Question back, why, why, why do you want to paint that particular photo if it doesn't have the information that you want it to have? Is there something about it that... Because um, I'm, I'm usually going to try to pick something that has en enough of the information that I want. Um, I, I, it's not a sarcastic question, it's just... It, I'm just wondering: is there is it is it special to you? Is there is the scene something you know that you really um, are you know hot to paint because it's special? Okay, so now. 
I feel like you guys aren't here because I, I'm having a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> That's, sorry. I try not to do that. I try not to get in my head too much while I'm painting for you guys because it's, yeah, this person's the person. The flat photo, um, Philippe, is uh, it's a particular place, and they don't have any other. Oh uh, yeah, uh, photos right. Of it, so. That's what I thought. Um, might be. Oh boy, that's tough because if you don't have the right info, um, uh, you know, maybe, you know, that could be tricky, right? Um, what I would say then is um, you, then then you have to rely on a couple things. You could try to find something that is similar in in its um, uh, um, subject matter. You can try to um, uh, then you kind of have to be studying um, form to really get. Um, the, um, to achieve that, that volume that you maybe want. Okay, I'm going to paint and hold on to questions a little bit until I get this a little more. But you guys, I love this. This is really fun. It's fun to paint. Fun to get this kind of um, really diffuse background. I really love this over here. Oh, there's So now I want to look at how I'm looking at how I did it before. Oh, do I want some of these guys in here? Yeah, I kind of do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a little more um, color than they have. Yeah, that's too much like the pot. Uh, that's something interesting, maybe this. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Now these stems go right off. I have to ask this question because I really like it. Okay. Um, I'm taking a lot of photos on winter walks, uh -huh. but the sky and the light are often gray. Sky, water, etc., appear the same value. How can I add contrast and color? Um, we were just doing some work with Henry Twatchman. Yeah. And uh, he does a lot of these really great landscapes that are almost all the same value. They're really beautiful. Yeah. The, so the value is um, um, very compressed. Uh, so they're really close. Everything's super close in value, right? Um, I, 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 yeah, and I agree, Kevin. They're really just beautiful, beautiful work. Um, and I, sometimes that, that you know there's there's such beauty in that um, so you're gonna have to um, yeah rely on a little bit of a shift of, of, of hue in that case just be real subtle yeah it's okay for stuff to be like that it's great so now I'm gonna
oh, this, this, this piece I could spend, I could be spending all day on this because there's so many opportunities in here to play with the negative shapes and all kinds of good, fun stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love that. And just to clarify, the, the painter that I mentioned, his name is John Henry, Henry Twatchman. Twatchman, what a name. T-W-A-C-H-T-M-A-N. I have a couple books on him, thanks Thank to my mom. Fantastic painter. Yeah, fantastic, yeah. And my mom is my, my book hound. She finds all the good stuff for me. This is just the edge of the pot a little bit. Use the inside of it. Actually, this flower comes up a little bit more. Breaks that shape. I like that. All right, let's... It's starting to come together really nice. Um, and I'm just about to an hour, but I'm going to, I'm going to go over a little bit today to be able to get this a little bit further. I'm loving it. Absolutely loving painting it. It's so fun. Like this right here is real, um, there's nothing there. I think it might be nice if it was a l little bit lighter and maybe some gray so that um, it uh, is a little bit of a contrast to the plants in the pot. Maybe a little more gray. All right, that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit more with the sky. Maybe this suggests that these are there's some trees back here, which there are. Think about what shape is being created. I can also get some negative shapes in here. Like that. Sweet. Okay. Now I can see my way that I want a little bit more pop of value there. I want a little bit of green and in, inside my pot here, these guys. And then behind, there's some lighter. So the, again, just layers and patterns of light and shadow, even in something like this, let's, you know, that get that kind of depth. Here's a question mm -hmm. that I might be able to answer. Um, would you ever consider or have you ever done a three or four hour live stream for free like this? 
Jeez. We're, we're not gluttons for punishment. So I, I would say a resounding no to that. The, that's, yeah, Kevin's like, no, are you kidding? Don't give Marla any ideas. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard work. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's a little more stressful than than we let on, lead on, uh, honestly. Um, we try not to let that show, but um, it's not. Um, it's to me. It, it it's not the the. the the stress is not, um, it's not about painting. I never feel stress about painting. It's about um, the technology. <laughs> like, is it all gonna work? <sighs> is YouTube gonna cooperate? Is the computer gonna cooperate? All that. So I'm gonna play with a little, little bit of um, playful stuff in there. Just again, you know, playing with the layers. All right, I'm, I'm saving a couple things to do because I know they're gonna be fun. I'm gonna work on the building. I'm gonna pop some more color into the flowers up in here. I haven't finished these flowers. Up in here, they'll kind of create a little more design. I want to get the orange flowers in, so I better I better get to work. I'm, I've been uh, kind of playing around a little bit too much. Oh, this is a little messy, but that's all right. You know what? Maybe I want some other pinks. Maybe I want this. This is my really bright, kind of chartreuse looking, not chartreuse, magenta. It's kind of fun. I have an idea that I want a little bit more. Yeah, and just to clarify that the scoring on the paper is a manufacturer defect. Yeah, it is. It's not, not, it's not supposed to be like that. But I have been seeing that come through here and there, and um, I've had other you know, students um, say the same. So, um, yeah, it's kind of tricky. All right, time to get time to get some of these flowers going. And a little bit more. Let's see if this will work. I think so. I think this is going to be good. Oh, I want to get the center of these flowers a little bit darker. These guys Before I put the oh. Oh, like that, I'm unhappy with this little cluster of flowers. I'm gonna maybe swing back around to it. I 
So I'm going to come in here with the, some strokes that I feel like sort of talk about the petal, the, the kind of petunia-like petals, and they're kind of floppy, not real rigid. Some are facing me. I'm seeing the whole, like a certain fa a whole face of them. Some, I'm just seeing the, more of an ellipse. It's nice. Kind of layered. Now I'm going to put these guys in. So kind of little star-shaped looking guys. little purple centers. And just to clarify for everybody, um, I'm not getting to all the questions because I kind of want to leave Marla alone a little bit. Uh, we'll, just to let her... Um, we'll get a, we'll some, get, we'll get we'll a get bunch some of questions in. at the end, you and guys. just stay tuned. You know, we do these um, yeah. all the time. And, yeah. and if anyone in the chat can chime in and help with, you know, simple questions, we, we always appreciate that. Blue spruce is the number one answer to that. <laughs> It's the answer to almost every question. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Get the top of the roof a little bit more. That's fun. Maybe this comes over here just a little bit like that. Oh, I want, I want to see if I can get, oh yeah, maybe this color is better. Boy, there's a chainsaws. You're gonna hear that in the neighborhood a lot. And these these live videos will be on the YouTube page. Yes. Yeah. You might not be able to watch it right away. It takes a little while to. No, but not very well, long. It's yeah. pretty. It's pretty quick. A couple minutes, really, right? Yeah, it doesn't really take very long. All right. I'm going to just do a couple more things back here, and then I'm going to have to wrap it up, and then we'll take some questions. And I'll just talk about what I'd like to do if I had another half hour with it. Most of the trees on your street survived, right? There's just a few. Yeah, yeah. But the people had a pretty significant damage to their properties, and um, one of our team did, and it's not fun. And I, when I went on my walk, I was, you know, I knew that there was a lot of damage, but boy, you know, people are out there in their yards cleaning up and um, piling up their. Um, the branches and limbs, and it's pretty intense. 
Yeah. Pretty crazy. I just want this a little darker down here just to kind of frame the whole thing. It's nice. And then, oh, I want to get those orange flowers in. And then I think I'll feel pretty good about it once I get the orange ones in. It's really different for me, right? But it's really fun. It's really nice. I actually don't have that placed exactly where I'd like it, but it's okay. And this a little bit more in shadow. out a couple little more fun negative shapes. And do you have one piece of advice for an aspiring uh, pastelist? If, if I had to give one piece of advice to any painter, um, no matter what the media, um, I would say to draw a lot, to, to really, really draw, um, and, um, uh, and I think that probably the thing that, um, has me, given me the most, um, uh, power as a, as an artist and power, not in a bad way. Um, flexibility um, was maybe better, a better choice of words. It's that um, I give myself permission to do it badly. And that, that is, um, I, never, I never hang my worth as a painter, a person, whatever, on a piece on, on this. I could come across in a, in a millisecond and get rid of this and I go to sleep at night. And also, I'm, if, it, if it turns out bad and I'm doing it in front of you, even I don't, it's not that I don't care because I do deeply care about painting, but it's, I'm not hanging anything on a particular painting or my self-worth on a painting or anything at all, really. <laughs> So, permission to do it badly, very badly. Sometimes it's very bad. Okay, little orange flowers. Now I'm really, no, yeah, this is really the time to look at this. These, this is what I did there that I liked a lot. Now these these are this particular kind of flower, right? And they're sitting in the midst of these branches. Some of them I'm seeing just that like a little edge of them. And I'm getting to see they're 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 a little bit darker orange on the tips. I could play with that a little, but I don't need to go nutty. Yes, they're sent on us. Get a little smaller out here. 
And just to let um, Sonia and Tracy and Peggy know, we do have a drawing workshop in the works. It'll be out this year. <laughs> we do. We're, we're we, going to do it. We kind of walked into that one. Uh, that, uh, oh, yeah, I did say drawing, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be fantastic. It's gonna yeah, be we're, we're excited about doing it. We're finishing the thing so yearly. We're, we're working on a ton of workshops right now. It's yeah. It's going to be amazing. We're it'll busy. Be our, it'll be our biggest year for sure. It, yeah. It's busy, but it's fun. I mean, look at what we get to do every day. It's pretty epic. Soften up some of that so it doesn't poke out too much. Now, all right, I've spent a lot of time. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. Um, I didn't think this would be as time intensive or as interesting for me as it is, but it, it was. Um, so let's let's kind of wrap it up in terms of the painting. Then we can t I can take a few questions and um, then. Um, show the sticks and um, we did have we had a we had a request and it's a good request I think it's um, um, great um, to to take photos of the sticks the thing is I, I've got to figure out how I'm gonna um, let you guys see that the the sticks um, you know, there might we might be able to do a link. I'm not sure how we're going to do that for the YouTube lessons, but definitely for the monthly people, that's something that we can pretty easily do. Let's do let's do a little highlight because I can and it's fun. All right, let's wrap that up for now. I'm going to put the um, this on it just to see what I got. I think it'd be fun to have a little bit more um, uh, line work in here. Like if I, I, I would, you know, be coming in here and playing with some stuff like that. Uh, you know, I think it would be neat to have that. Maybe play with some of these negative shapes a little bit more, like cut into some of this and really design some of these shapes a little bit more. You know, that, that could be fun. Um, if I had, and, you know, another half hour. Okay. Let's take a look at it, though. That's, that's pretty neat. I'll get your left arm down. There. Yeah, I'll get it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's fun. That looks great. Really different for me, but I liked it. So here's my here's my sketch. Lift it up a little bit. It's, well, maybe Bryce has it up there. I don't know. Okay. And now let's take a look at those right. sticks. Sticks. Now, so there's a pretty wide. Um, Pretty wide value range. Just get them ordered a little bit. And wide, broad value range and broad hue range because we've got all these different colored flowers. Um, so we've got some darks, some purples. I use these in the background, kind of neutral. It's kind of purpley. Lots of blues, surprisingly. Um, lots of greens. And kind of bright things here. I'm curious because about counting the sticks because I'm always kind of curious how many so let's see 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And I'm going to say just a couple more. So, so maybe 35 at the most. That's a lot. That's a lot of sticks for sure. But, okay. All right, guys. Um, all right, <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Turned my back on you. Um, thanks so much for watching today. I hope you have a safe and warm and electrified <laughs> weekend this, this, uh, this weekend. And I really appreciate you joining uh, us today. And um, make sure you visit the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and uh, check out what we've got going on there. And lots more to come this year. We're working hard. And anyway, um, again, we'll probably, we'll see you next week. We'll be um, doing another live stream next week. Okay, bye-bye.